Welcome to uh, today's daily mindset tip. Uh, and today I want to share with you kind of three tips, really, my three top kind of tips and strategies for helping you to prevent stress and overwhelm. Unfortunately, too often people kind of leave um, their well-being to chance and they end up kind of getting to a point where uh, they're overwhelmed, they're burnt out and they're having to take a kind of a, a reactive approach to uh, getting themselves back to a good place. But I want you to kind of not wait until then and think about how you can put these things into practice almost as um, a preventative. You know, prevention is always far, far more effective um, than reactive measures. But no matter where you are, where your kind of mind fitness is currently, these three kind of top tips are things that you can kind of naturally and easily weave in to uh, what you're doing. And the first tip is to choose your boundaries. Choose the boundaries that kind of work most effectively for you, the things that are going to benefit you the most. And depending on your situation, it might be the obvious things that people talk about, things like, you know, choosing when you're going to um, look at emails, choose at how much time you spend um, on your phone, choose um, when you're going to take those breaks um, in your day. But don't leave it to chance. So think of your kind of mind fitness, your, your energy, like the battery on a device like your phone. And, you know, I'm forever saying to clients, and I shared a post recently that kind of um, seemed to resonate with quite a few people. And that was, you don't leave those things until they run completely empty before you charge them up. Okay, occasionally that might happen, but more often than not, you keep your phone um, optimised and charged and you top it up when um, required or before required. But why don't we do that with ourselves? You know, why do we wait until we feel like we're running flat, we're running on empty before we take time to give ourselves a boost? And setting those boundaries, um, choosing those boundaries is a really, really kind of effective way of helping you to do that. Because, you know, if you're spending copious amounts of time doing an activity that's draining you, then obviously, naturally, you're going to need to kind of recharge. So choose boundaries that work for you and make sure you put things into place that kind of give you a boost um, in your day, in your week, in your month, in your year. And then within that, my second tip is kind of choose to be more present. And notice with these, I'm saying choose, because that's it. We've got all got choices that we can make. We can choose to keep doing what we're doing. We can choose to wait till we need to, to kind of um, take reactive measures, or we can choose to take preventative measures. So choose to be more present. And being more present is a really great way of, of giving yourself that optimum boost and charge um, in your day. And I'm not gonna kind of prescribe to you what you should do, how often you should do it, but just think about how you can be more present. You know, get off that treadmill of your day, of your work, of your life, and just stop. You know, there's that old kind of phrase of stop and smell the flowers. How can you get out of your head naturally and just be more present in that moment? And things like meditation, things like um, deep breathing, they're all really, really effective ways of doing that. But even if you just stop and be mindful in the moment that you're in, um, a really kind of nice, easy strategy that can help engage all of your senses is a technique called the 54321. So no matter where you are or what's going on around you, it's something you can do um, anywhere at any time and nobody else needs to know that you're doing it. Now, the order is set out in a way um, that works most effectively. But again, if you lose your place, if you do it in a slight it doesn't matter. You know, doing one of these things is going to be helpful. But if you can com compound all of your senses together, then it becomes even more effective. And the 5 4 3 two, one if you haven't come across it before, is simply where you're at, stop and acknowledge five things that you can see. My twist on that is five things that you can see above your own eye level. So just observe, acknowledge, be mindful, pay attention to five things that you can see. Then four things that you can hear. Really kind of tune in and stop and kind of listen 
to four things that are going on around you. Again, it doesn't matter what it is, it's just taking the time to be present, to be mindful, to tune into that is just another way of helping you to kind of recharge, reboot, kind of recenter and just become more grounded. And then three things that you can feel. Now, my favorite is always to start off with uh, become aware of the feeling of the ground beneath your feet. So whether you're sitting or whether you're out walking, just become aware of the ground beneath your feet. And it, it is a really good way to become more grounded by doing that. Um, but again, whatever it is, just three things that you can feel. It could be the air temperature, it could be the texture of your clothes. You could physically go and touch something that will kind of engage your senses in that way. And the other two are um, two things that you can smell. And again, depending on where you are, if it's quite neutral and you're really struggling with this one, just imagine two things you like the smell of. You know, for me, I, I quite like the smell of fresh cut grass in the summer. So I'll think of that. For you, it might be clean, fresh sea air. It could be your favourite perfume. It could be your favourite flower. Just if you can't connect to two things you can smell where you are, then just imagine two things you like the smell of. And then the last one is one thing that you can taste. And if you've got a drink nearby, just take a kind of a, a mouthful of that and taste that. Or similar to the smell, if you really can't taste anything, simply imagine one thing that you like the taste of. So that's five, four, three, two, one. Combine all of your senses to help you to be more present, to be more mindful in the here and the now. And there's a really, really quick and effective way of helping to recharge, to reboot, and to re-energize. As with all of these tips, doing these things once is very unlikely to make a positive impact. You may feel better in that moment, but, and that's fabulous, but then when you return to the busyness and the demands of day-to-day uh, -day life, then um, you know, you, you're probably not gonna get a long-term lasting effect from doing it just once. So the key is to be consistent to do it often, to think about times um, in your day where you can kind of check in and, and do the five, four, three, two, one. For me, usually in the morning when I'm out walking the dog, I'll run through that, um, not because I feel I need to, but I do it because I know it's a really, really good, um, effective uh, strategy to help me to just recenter. Uh, and if you can do that periodically throughout your day, then that will really help you and stop your levels from going too high. Every time you do it, it just helps to bring it down, bring it down and bring it down. So consistency, as often as you can, just weave it in to your day and the activities and, and, and see what a positive benefit it will have for you. And, you know, again, I'm forever saying to, to clients, think of it like physical fitness. You know, you wouldn't go for a walk, for a run, uh, for a PT session, for a gym session, once or twice or even for a month and expect um, that you can just tick off your physical fitness and never have to do it again. It's something that you benefit from and you optimise by doing it on an ongoing, regular, consistent basis. And your mind fitness has to be approached in exactly the same way. These things aren't one-off wonders. And too often people will say to me, oh yeah, I know about that, or yeah, I've tried that, or I've done that before, but they haven't kind of maintained it consistently enough to get the real, true benefit from doing it. So take the time to... Uh, um, give yourself a chance to, to reap the benefits from doing it um, on a more kind of ongoing, consistent basis. And then the other one, again, sounds simple, it sounds obvious, and people often overlook it for its simplicity, but kind of choose to take regular breaks in your day. And if you think about, um, you know, if you're working at a high level, um, at some pace and you've got demands coming at you, um, and you, 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 you say you haven't got time for a break, well, that's probably the time when you need to take the break the most. But again, it doesn't mean you have to kind of, you know, go for long breaks, but even just stopping and pausing and taking a break to do the five, four, three, two, one, to, to be mindful, to be present, that's taking a break. So think about the things that you can do. You know, lots of people I work with benefit from, um, you know, at lunchtime or mid-afternoon, just going for a short break, whether that be a, a quick walk around the block or a decent walk. Um, go for, you know, if you keep working at a pace and your battery's going to run out, then you're not going to be much good to anyone and then your work ends up not being a, a, as high level quality as you'd like it to be. So not only can this help you to prevent 
kind of stress, burnout and overwhelm, but it also optimizes your productivity um, and your focus. So take those break opportunities as, as a way of kind of knowing that you're helping yourself to recharge, to reboot, and then you could be more effective um, thereafter. So whatever works for you, just choose to take regular breaks throughout your day, throughout a week, throughout your month, throughout a year. Unfortunately, most people either leave their breaks till the weekend or even their annual holiday. So as well as those things, which are brilliant and fantastic for kind of like that deep recharge, think about how you can get those shorter bursts, those shorter charges on a regular basis and uh, notice what a kind of positive difference it has when you do it. So there you go, there, there's, there's my three top tips for today to help you to um, avoid and prevent uh, burnout and to be more effective, efficient and productive um, in all that you do. So feel free to leave me a comment and let me know um, what you're gonna take away from those, which ones you're gonna have a go at, or if you've got any other um, things that you find helpful in keeping you um, in that optimum frame of mind to be the best that you can be. Um, yeah, let me let me know. Leave me a comment. I look forward to hearing um, how you get on with those. Take care and I'll uh, speak to you tomorrow.